Let's talk about how we can describe surfaces and curves. Well, there are generally two ways. One is using implicit equations and their combination, and another is a parametric form. Let's talk about the first. So let's say you have two scalar functions, f of x, y, and z, and g, of the same independent variables, which define relationship between the x, y, and z. So if you express it explicitly, then z will depend on x and y, which defines your surface. Now, a common example will be a sphere located at the center of radius 1. And if you take a sphere and also a plane, then the intersection will give you a curve. So you can see you have your sphere and you have your plane. Right? And the intersection will give you a ring. Okay, so you have something which lives on that curve, that line, which is c defined by x squared plus y squared equals 1, where you had a plane z equals 0, and you had a sphere which is given by that equation. Okay. So if you take an inter intersection of the sphere and the plane, you get the, the ring, the circle. And two equations are needed for that, as I explained, because you need to get an intersection. A different form, much more useful form, I have to say, is a parametric form of describing surfaces. So there you use a parameter to tell you where you are on the surface or on the curve, along the curve. So what you have is you have a position vector which traces your location on the curve or on the surface so that it can describe your location. So again, a good example on the surface will be a latitude and longitude as the two parameters. What's important to know is that we need one parameter for the curve or two equations to get the intersection, but we need two parameters for the sphere or for general surface. So again, we generally need two parameters such as longitude and, l and latitude for the surface parameterization, but only one for the curve, only one degree of freedom, because curve can, you know, can only move back and forth, it can't move sideways. Let's look at the example, just extending what we've seen. So we take our sphere, we take our plane, we cut it, and we get a horizontal ring. And to describe this ring, we can use this expression. So we have a position vector where this is x of t, that is y of t, and that is z of t. And z of t is 0, because we are in a plane z equals 0. So that is expression for our ring. So if we move that way, as we change our parameter, t, and the point will depend on this parameter. So that is our ring, described by that equation. Yes, that's an example of a ring in, in the plane. Now, let's talk a bit more. What does it actually mean? What does it mean tracing out as we move a, a, around the curve? So generally, this for a ring, it between 0 and 2 pi, 
because then we move full circle, the t will be 2 pi, so cosine of 2 pi is the same as cosine 0. And if we say we move later, you know, we keep moving, then we can just return or make several rounds uh, along the circle. So we can do more than 2 pi, but that means that we started a, a new round. Another example will be a straight line. For example, if we take our vector, depending on one parameter t, and write it down as some constant vector plus parameter times another constant vector. And if we pick just two vectors, for example, 3 minus 1, 2, plus t, 2, 1, 3, we can simplify it and write it as 3 plus 2t minus 1 plus t and 2 plus 3t, right? So that will be a parametric way to describe a straight line. So in this case again you have your x of t y of t and z of t, which all depend on this one parameter. So, and that's for the straight line. So one of these vectors defines you a reference location on that line. So for t equals zero, that vector belongs to this line. And another vector shows you orientation of that line. So once you sum them up you can move along the straight line. And yet another example, let's look at the curve which is given by that expression. So you have again cosine t sine t and also some linear dependence on parameter. What does it look like? Well you can write it also, again, remember we have two ways to describe vectors, the coordinate form and the sum notation with the unit vectors. And that is the circular helix. So you can visualize it by moving like you move in a circle, but also do some increases in your z-coordinate. So you have your z-coordinate which is pointing upwards and that will be the example of the helix. So you not just do your revolutions in the plane but you also move upwards as, as the parameter t increases. And if we only consider a part of the curve we can limit our parameter. So if we don't want the full circle we can always say we want a half circle, so let's move from 0 to pi. So that will be an example of a half circle, where you only move to there. So that will be the example of that curve. So you start somewhere and you stop not making the full revolution if it's for the, for the full circle. A very useful concept is a tangent. Tangent is literally a straight line touching curve. And what we want to do now is briefly understand how to compute tangents. So let's take two points, P and Q, uh, on the same curve and that make them close and close and close to each other until kind of they meet or nearly. And if we use a parameterized form then let's say point P was just some location, you know, at a given fixed parameter, and Q was in the slightly later location, you know, slightly uh, different parameter. And then if we take these points really close on the line, if we have these points P and Q very close and close and close and close and then 
that will finally at some point will become something like a derivative. So as this distance between these points tends to zero, we will obtain this derivative. So it's a standard definition of a derivative, but on the line, along the line. But what is useful, we can differentiate not the whole thing at once, but we can differentiate this position vector component by component. So we can differentiate first x, then y, then z, with respect to parameter t. Okay? And that will be called a tangent vector. So taking a derivative with respect to parameter t of the position vector will get a tangent. So that's what I want you to bear in mind. So as long as it's not zero, the tangent is always defined at any point of the curve. And once we have a tangent, like we had for the equation of a straight line, we can get equation for the tangent line. And in general, we need two vectors and a parameter. So the vector number one will be the position vector, which just sits somewhere on the curve. And another tangent vector points along the uh, line, straight line, tangent line, and you need another parameter to move along this tangent line. So by combining these three pieces of information, you can get an equation for the tangent. So that is what I want you to bear in mind. So this is how you get a tangent to any curve, doesn't matter what shape it has, as long as you can compute these pieces, the position vector, the its derivative, and add a parameter, you can have that tangent line. So q is just a position vector and um, uh, the uh, w is a new parameter. So it's very similar to what we've seen before, we had the you know, t, but now it's a different parameter. Okay, example. Let's look for the tangent to the ellipse. So ellipse means that you have a different uh, principal axis, so they're not equal diameters. But not just tangent anywhere, but tangent in the position given by point P. So to do it, we use equation of the ellipse in a parametric form. So we define parameter t and write x as 2 cosine and y as sine. So very similar to the circle, but just note this too. And we can check that this satisfies this equation. But what we need now is we need to use the definition of a tangent line. So first we note that the position vector r of t is x of t, y of t which in our case will be 2 cosine t sine t and note that point p is actually sitting at the location for the position vector at pi over 4 which is 2 cosine pi over 4 sine pi over 4 um, sorry, it's 4, uh, which will give us our point P, okay, and then we need another uh, vector which is the vector in the tangent orientation which is the R prime, so the R prime of T in general will be just the derivative of the X with respect to time and dy and if we differentiate it we get minus 2 sine t cosine t and again at the point p we get the position vector pi over 4 they take the parameter t equals to pi over 4 so that's that's that and then we get minus 2 sine pi over 4 cosine p 
pi over 4, which will be simplified to minus square root of 2, square root of 2 over 2. Right, so that's two pieces of information we need. So we now have the, the orientation along the tangent line and we have the position of our vector at this point which we wanted to. So putting these together, we have an equation for the ellipse, for the tangent to the ellipse, I mean. So you have the first bit, which is the position at this point, and you have a second bit, which is the derivative of that position at this point. And you have a parameter. And if you add this together and simplify, you get an equation for the tangent to the ellipse. So that is the answer. So, of course, if it will be given a different point, the tangent to the ellipse will be pointing in a different direction and it will change. But at this point, at a given point, we now know that it depends only on one parameter, so at a fixed point to the ellipse, it's just a straight line touching this ellipse at this point.